Afternoon everybody and welcome back to the second video in our series looking at the new Blue Sound node. In this video I'm going to show you how you can get the node connected to your network, dive into some of the audio options, look at how you get your streaming services added as well as how to set up some presets. These presets allow you to take advantage of the buttons added to the top panel of this new version of the node. So the first step is going to be getting the node physically connected. For more of an explanation on this have a look at the first video where I go into more detail about what each of these connectors do. So first off, I'm just going to connect a pair of RCA cables into the audio output. I've got a nice pair of the cord shore line here. If you do have the option of connecting the node to your network with an Ethernet cable, I'd recommend it as it will almost always provide a stronger and more consistent connection. Today we're going to set the node up over Wi-Fi, but I'll also show you how the wired setup works. So let's get this plugged in and powered up. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you have the BlueOS app installed on your control device. This app controls any Blue Sound enabled product be that Blue Sound speakers or streamers, or products available from companies like NAD, DALI, and Monitor Audio. Today I'll be running the iPad version of the app, but it's also available for iPhones, Android devices, as well as Windows and Mac computers. Once the unit has powered up, this light will go green, meaning it is in hotspot mode. I'm now going to cut to a screen recording of the app, so you can hopefully follow along with the setup process. This is the main home screen on the iPad version of the app. The Blue Sound app is built around three main panes. The middle pane that we're looking at now is the browsing, playlist and now playing pane. If you're firing up the app for the first time, you'll be taken through the setup process first. But as we have a few Blue Sound products here already, you're seeing what it looks like when you're up and running. To start with, we're going to have a look at the right hand pane, which you can access by swiping towards the screen from the right hand side or by pressing the little house icon on the top right corner of the app. This pane shows you all of the different devices rooms you have set up. The Blue Art system is designed to allow you to get your music into every room in your house and this section is where you can change between different rooms, group them together and control volumes. As you can see here, we have quite a few devices set up already. If you scroll down to the bottom, you have this little plus sign with the Add Player button. So the Blue Sound app has searched for any nearby players in hotspot mode and has very quickly found the node that we're setting up today, which has just got a generic name here. If I click on this name, I'm brought to the AirPlay setup as I'm setting this up on an iPad. Um, it's just searching and working out some information about my network from my iPad. So here you can see it's connected to our 5G network that we've got here. Um, if I wanted to connect it to a different network, say our 2.4 GHz network, I can click Show Other Networks and select that there. If I click the Speaker Name section here, I can rename the unit. Um, this node is going in our demo room, so I'm going to imaginatively title it Node Demo Room. And then, when I have everything set up how I'd like it to be, I just click Next in the top right corner. This will then just take a moment or two to apply the network settings to the Blue Sound node. And there we have it, it's connected and on our wireless network. So I can click Done here. The Blue Sound app will now just search to see if there are any updates for the Blue Sound node. Which there weren't today. And then we're all done. Now I just click Finish here. And then I can see the node demo room listed alongside all our other Blue Sound players. That was setting the Blue Sound node up via Wi Fi. But if you had plugged it into your network with an Ethernet cable earlier, what you'd see is something like this, with the node listed here amongst the other rooms, with a little indicating that it needs some setup. If you click on the node, you'll eventually be taken through to a screen where you can rename the unit. It will search for updates, like on the previous section, and then it's just done, added to your other rooms. Once you select the node from amongst this list of devices, you'll see three little dots on the right hand side. If you press this, this will bring up a menu allowing you to customise the audio settings as well as connect Bluetooth headphones. The first option we have in the audio settings menu are the tone controls. If you turn these on, you have the option of tweaking the balance between bass and treble coming out of the node. These can be handy for people having particular issues with the way their speakers are interacting with their room, but for most users we'd recommend leaving the tone controls off so you're getting a more accurate representation of what the musician's intended. 
Next up is the option to add a subwoofer, connected via the subwoofer output on the back of the node. Turning this on allows you to set a crossover, which is the frequency below which the audio will be sent to the subwoofer. This will often take a little trial and error to get right, but a good rule of thumb is that the physically smaller the speaker, the higher the crossover will have to be. Next are the options for replay gain, which allows the node to try and apply a consistent volume level to all the music you play for it, and the output mode settings, which allow you to choose to output either just the left or right channels or a combined mono mix. The overwhelming majority of users are going to want to just leave this on stereo. I'm going to skip ahead slightly and talk about volume limits. By default, the node has a variable volume output. This means that you could potentially connect the node directly into a power amp, or perhaps a pair of active speakers, and control the volume from within the Blue Sound app. If you are doing this, you'll probably want to set a maximum volume limit to ensure that you don't accidentally deafen yourself or damage your equipment by pushing it too hard. However, in our demo room, we'll most often be using the streamer with an integrated amp, i.e. one with its own separate volume control. Therefore, we want the node to be putting out a fixed, line-level audio as we flick the appropriate switch. Doing so also gives you the option to tell the node that you're using an external DAC that supports the MQA format, if you are doing so. Now to finish setting this up, I'm going to show you how you can add your streaming services to the Bluesound system, and set up some quick access presets. All of these features live on the left-hand pane of the app, and like the Rooms menu but in reverse, is accessible by swiping towards the screen from off the left-hand side this time, or by pressing the icon with three horizontal lines in the top left corner. This is sometimes called a hamburger icon, so do with that information what you will. The left-hand pane is broken into a couple of different groups. First of all is the personal section, comprising of your playlists, presets and favourites. It's important to bear in mind that these are favourites and playlists you create within the Blue Sound app, not within your streaming service. The benefit of a playlist made within the BlueOS system is that it can contain music from across multiple sources, i.e. from different streaming sources or your locally stored music, and pull it all together in one place. The next group can be considered as your local sources. The library is where you'll see music that is shared on your network, perhaps from a PC, a NAS drive, or from the Blue Sound Vault, like we have here. Below the library, you can see the Bluetooth connection, as well as the HDMI and optical inputs, so devices that are physically connected to your node. Below this are your streaming services. When you first start up, this list should be populated with TuneIn, which is the internet radio provider, as well as Calm Radio and Radio Paradise. I cannot recommend Radio Paradise highly enough. They have four different mixes, each available in CD quality or the higher spec MQA format, and they play a really eclectic and interesting variety of music without adverts. It's very often what you'll hear playing when you come into store. We also have a Tidal account here that we use for streaming. Below this, you'll see the cloud with the plus symbol, and if you click this, you have the option to add your own streaming services. As you can see here, there are a huge variety of streaming services supported by Bluesound. Although Spotify is included in this list, selecting it will just direct you to install the Spotify app and control your music from there. To do this, from within the Spotify app, simply press the Devices button and select the node, and your music will start playing through your hi-fi while the app acts as a remote control. Similarly, for Apple Music, from within the Music app, press the AirPlay icon and select the node to have your music play. To add a music service, let's say Amazon Music for example, simply click the icon, then the login button. You'll be taken to the login portal, and once you've signed in, Amazon Music will show on this left-hand pane as an available service. Press on it and you're able to browse the library and start playing music. Finally, let's get some quick access presets set up. Pressing the My Presets icon towards the top of the left-hand pane will bring up this screen, which is currently empty as we haven't added anything yet. To get started, press the plus icon towards the top right. You can pick a number for each preset, with space for up to 40. The first five will be accessible from the buttons on the top of the node, and the optional Blue Sound Remote will give you one pressed access to the first 10. Let's start at the beginning here and make this number one. Pressing Preset Sound allows you to choose what will happen when you select this preset. As I've mentioned, we often have the Radio Paradise main mix running in store, so I'm going to select that first of all. You can see that it has automatically been named after what I selected, and if I press back, you can see the icon and the number one, indicating that the first preset is set up. Let's press the plus button again, and this time I'm going to add something from one of my streaming services. So I'll select Tidal, Favourite Playlists, and let's have some awesome jazz. If I press back again, you can see this second icon added, and it's pulled the artwork directly from the streaming service, which is a nice touch. 
Finally, let's add quick access to one of the physical inputs. If I select inputs, I can see the connections currently available, and I'm going to pick the optical input. This is really handy for if I've maybe got a TV connected to the node via optical. I can just get it playing, press button number 3 on the top of the node, and I'm getting my TV sound from my hi-fi, taking advantage of the nice digital to analog converter inside the blue sound. I don't have to find my iPad first, unlock it, boot up the app, and find the right input. I can just press one button and I'm done. If I go back again, I can see all the presets I've set up. So what does this look like in action? Here you can see the blue sound node with the new touch control top panel. The blue indicator will always be on, but the other controls are activated by a proximity sensor. Along the top are five preset buttons with the volume up and down buttons in the middle and the back, play pause and forwards buttons along the bottom row. When I press the first preset button, you can see in the now playing bar on the bottom that Radio Paradise instantly starts playing. Button 2 brings up a playlist of allegedly awesome jazz. Button 3 turns to the optical input. Going back to the jazz playlist, I can show that the blue icon pauses the music and gets it playing again. The button on the right skips forward a track, and the button on the left will skip to the beginning of the current track, or back to the previous one if you're already at the beginning. And there you have it. With this new top panel and the presets you set up in the BlueOS app, the new Blue Sound node makes it quick and easy to access whatever music you want. Hopefully this has given you a peek at the functionality of this brilliant little music streamer, and if you've been following along with your own Blue Sound player, you should now be up and running. Thanks for watching.